Remember, you can go back and watch today's service on our Facebook and YouTube social media page at Gilfield MBC. Also, remember to like and subscribe to our pages. Please remember and pray for our sick and shut-in, Brother Thomas Ray Warner, Brother Felipe Kraft, Brother Albert Moore, Brother Randy Garner, Brother Elijah William, Brother Irvin Harvey Sr., Brother Maurice Kirvin, Sister Georgia Goodman, Sister Ann Brewer, Sister Betty Fields, Sister Eula Pugh, Sister Sadie Brewer, Sister Denise Hickerson, Sister Maddie McLean, Sister Dorothy Brown, Sister Harry Ricks, Sister Shirley Tuggle, Sister Mary Peden family, Sister Gwendolyn Hackett, Sister Rochelle Guffin, Sister Sandy Gunner, and let's do a special prayer for Sister Diane Macklin. She's undergoing physical rehabilitation at this time. Also, we're asking a special prayer for our own Sister Madison Tolliver. Uh, she will have surgery on her ACL uh, on her leg this Wednesday. So let's keep her in her prayers. Please pray for our soldiers, school system, youth, students, teachers, principals, our doctors, nurses, hospital workers, essential workers, postal workers, and first responders everywhere. Thank you. Amen. And we just praise God for Minister Levy. Give him another count round of applause. Job well done. For we really do need more love to be displayed everywhere. And that is a wonderful reminder of us by God's word to, to show God's love and to give love to even those who are unlovable because that makes the difference of who we are. Amen. And on top of that, we are ready for our closing prayer. Holy Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you for a brand new dawning. We thank you for a brand new year of promotion and to start off to a brand new Sunday school year that only you could bring forth. We ask for your blessings and favor upon Brother Benton and Brother Barnett. Give them wisdom, give them guidance as to how to go through and about the new year of our new Sunday school year. Bless the teachers, bless the secretaries, Bless the students. Bless all those who are part of Gilfield Sunday School, Lord. Grant favor, Lord, to every household. We thank you right now. Renew within us the right spirit to go forward in you. Let your word transform us in this new year. Let your word be a beacon of light that we would be living examples of you, not only here at Hillfield, but everywhere we go. And we give you all the praises, all the glory, all the honor. Bless the word of God indeed, Lord, even more to go forth. Bless the music ministry. Bless every auxiliary to go forth with excellence. And in your, in your seal, Lord, we thank you right now. To you be all the glory and honor. Bless Minister Levy and his household. Lord, we thank you right now that you are wonderful. You are awesome. You are the amazing God. And we believe you for every good and perfect work. Because every good thing that comes to us is from you. And to you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. And all the worship and obedience. And in the name of Christ Jesus, we all said, Amen. Amen. Now we're in the hands of Brother... Learning to live, learning to live, learning to live on Jesus, finding more power than I've ever dreamed when I'm learning to live on Jesus, we're learning to lead, oh, learning to lead, learning to lead on Jesus, finding more power than I ever 
dream when I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Now, that was the song for the promotion. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we all got to learn a little bit more. Now let's jump on over in the morning worship. One more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together. One more time, help me say, y'all, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. Everybody say one more, one more time. One more time. He allowed us. He allowed us to come together one more time. Everybody do one more, one more time. He allowed us, allowed us to come together one, one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to clap our hands together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to put, he allowed us to clap out the hands. One more, sing together one more time. One more, one more time. He allowed us, he allowed us to sing together. Everybody say one more, one more time. He allowed us to sing together. Together. Sing together. One more time. Everybody say one more time. One more. He allowed us to sing together. One more time. One more time. He allowed us to pray together. He allowed us to pray together. One more time. Everybody say one more time. Oh yeah, one more. He allowed us. One more time. One more. One more time. He allowed us to come together. To come together. One more time. One more time. One more. Oh yeah, one more time. this beautiful day he's blessed us to receive we thank him for the gift of life every day that he's bestowed upon us the traveling mercies he gives us each and every day of our lives and his unmerited favor that he bestows upon us each day so we're grateful let us sing to his glory oh every praise every praise is to us every word of worship every word of worship one, every praise, every praise to our God, is to our God. Oh, every praise, every praise is to our, every word of worship, 
Verses 1 through 6. Blessed is the man that willeth. I can't. And not put these glasses on, but hey. <laughs> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth at the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shape which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yeah. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. This morning, Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Heavenly Father, we magnify you just for who you are. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the true and the living God. Heavenly Father, we just come before you asking you to breathe on us. Lay your hands on us. Your hands of healing. Your hands of mercy, of favor, of peace, of your amazing grace. Oh, Lord God, there are so many who are sick, who are diseased, who are in flood territories, who are in fire territories, earthquakes, volcanoes erupting. Grocery store prices are rising so high they can hardly feed their families. Bread, $5 a loaf. Lord, we just ask you to breathe on us. Thank you for your grace and your, and your mercy. We ask that you would bless the word as it goes forth. Lord, we thank you for the entire household of faith. We thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you have brought us through, all that you have brought us to. We can't thank you enough. Thank you. From the bottom of our hearts to the depths of our souls, we give you praise. And we thank you for accepting our praise. Lord, you are good, and thank you for allowing goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives. 
In Christ Jesus' name, pray it all. To you be glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Amen. God has been so good to me. When I was sick, wasn't encouraged that I was going to get well. But God. Oh Lord God, we come to sit for your healing, mm. for your deliverance. You are God, and beside you, there is none of my Savior and my deliverer. My way out of no way. I thank you for the tithes and offering. I thank you for the kindness. I thank you for the joy. I thank you for promotion. I thank you for my pastor and his family. I thank you for your field family. Lord God, let your word, let your word go forth. In your name we pray. Thank God. Thank God.
for a pro all the time, all the time, all the time I got you good. Save my soul from a burning hell. Yes, it did. He saved my soul from a burning hell. He healed my body one day. Yes, he did. He healed me one day. Some years of headaches, y'all. He healed my body. That's what I was talking about, Reverend Levy. He healed my body. Yes, he did. That's what I said. 53 and 5 said he healed me. Yes, he did. He healed me. Yes, he did. He healed me, y'all. Y'all don't know what I went through, but my God, he healed me. Yes, it did, y'all. Yes, it did, y'all. He healed me. Bless my family. Yes, it did, Lord. Up and down the road. All day, all night. He just keep on watching me. Yeah. All the time, all the time. He does that for me. Yeah. All the time, all the time, all the time. you know that we have come this far, leaning and depending on God, for on no other can we depend, and he's always there, all the time, night and day. Thank God for all of you. I thank God for your presence here on this morning. We had a wonderful promotion day. Amen. Thank God for Reverend Levy. Let us know that. Let us know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. His love is without end. Amen. He loves us in spite of ourselves. Amen. And he, Brother Brewer said he loves us all the time. Amen. Amen. You can't beat that. Amen. Most of our love is sometimes. We love when you do what we want you to do. But God loves us in spite of ourselves. He loves the what we would call the unlovable. Amen. The unreachable. He loves us anyway. The only real sin is the sin of not accepting him as your Lord and Savior. That's the unforgivable sin. If you don't accept him, there is no forgiveness of that. Isn't that right? That what, that's what will send you to hell. Not accepting Jesus Christ. Do you believe it? Everything else, he'll look over. It. He'll forgive you. He died for that. He paid the price for it. But if you don't accept him and what he did, 
He can't help you. Ain't that something to think about? That's something to think about. Amen. Hell was not created for us, but for Satan and his angels. In other words, his demons. Isn't that right? If you go, we didn't send you. You chose to go when you rejected him. Isn't that right? If you don't follow him, you got to go to the other place. Yeah, but he loved you so much that if you accept him, he'll take you in spite of what you've done. Yeah. Amen. Okay, now we can go on. <laughs> One sermon was enough anyway. I, I, I told Reverend Lee when he, a while ago, I said, One sermon was really enough. You, you really did enough. Amen and amen, amen. Praise God. I thank God for that. Amen. But but somebody didn't listen at that, so I give you a little something else. We're gonna give you part two of a message we started a few weeks ago. Yeah. Let's see, where is it if I can find it? Amen. Yeah, in the book of James. Amen. The fourth chapter. Verses 13 through 15. The last time we preached it was in the fourth chapter of James, but those, some of those preceding verses, I believe. Yeah, not too long ago, three or four weeks ago, something like that, maybe. Yeah. Book of James, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 15. God has brought us a long way. And I do mean a long way. Hey, Amen. Most of you haven't been on the road as long as I have, me and Brother Johnson, but God has been good to us. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Uh, thank God for every day the sun wasn't shining in our lives. Mm -hmm. But I also thank God it wasn't raining every day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank God. Somebody said the good days yeah. outweigh my bad days. So I, I, I won't complain. Do you have St. James 4 and 13? We're going to read verses 13 through 15. There you will find these words. Go now ye that say, tomorrow, today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. So that's an eye opener. We want to talk about the uncertainty of life. The uncertainty of life. Thank you, Richard. You may be seated. We act as though we hold the future in our own hands. But I'm here to remind us that God holds the future. We make our decisions based upon what we want, what we have seen on commercials and what others have, and we think that we want the same thing, and we make decisions to go and obtain and do and get and have, even without consulting God, not realizing the uncertainty of life. We make plans and you don't know if you will be here this evening. And James here is saying what we should say is if it is the Lord's will we'll do this or we will do that. I will see you tomorrow if it's the Lord's will. Isn't that right? Yeah, we will get together and we'll go and do and whatever, have our fun, have whatever, go to work or whatever, and I'll see you now. You take it easy, all right? 
but if it's the Lord's will. Yeah. It says, know ye not that your life is just as a vapor. That means a vapor, it, it, you don't know when it's going to disappear. It can dissipate at any time. It can resolve or dissolve or vanish or yeah, disappear at any time. Yeah, it's, 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 it's uncertain. In other words, you can't depend upon a vapor. And you can't depend upon us. Isn't that right? Because we know not what tomorrow bring, may bring. Isn't that right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We act as though we control time ourselves. And time is so valuable. And, and yet we don't regard it as we should. We should always consider God in any decision that we are about to make for he's the one that will allow it to happen. Or either, or either he will disallow for it to happen. So then even when we are making plans for our lives to go to school or to go to get a job or to get married, or whatever, if it's the Lord's will, yeah. isn't that right? I'm going to marry this person if it's the Lord's will. Isn't that right? Uh, I'm going to get me a job if it's the Lord's will. And I'm going to work there for X number of years if it's just the Lord's will. And I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna go to Detroit and get a job on the assembly line and, yeah. and work and save my money and come back and buy a house. And, yeah. yeah, but if it's the Lord's will, you see, because it might have a strike. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that right? That might put a snare in your plan. It uh, might delay your house building, and then you can you can get a house and have it built and pay for it, and get a car and pay for it, and have it sitting in the garage, and all of a sudden a storm comes through. Yeah. It's it's uncertain, and you might have to start all over again. Yeah. Is there anybody here ever had to start over? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometime in life you have to start over because life life is uncertain. Maybe it is because we didn't go to God. When we were making our plans, did we ask him, is this where you want us to build the house? Yeah. Or do you want us to have this house? Or, yeah. uh, and did we consult him at all? Well, is it your will for us? Uh, you know, are you hearing what I'm saying? We just go and do because we are free morally. I do what I want when I want to, if I want to. Uh, isn't that right? Without even talking to God, my life is uncertain. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that right? You don't you don't know what tomorrow may bring. We we find that in this lesson, this is just a, a letter that James has written. He wrote it to the twelve tribes of Israel. Really, it's a general epistle, meaning that it's for the general public. Yeah. It's just a letter. Actually, when he wrote the letter, there was no verses and chapters in it. It's with any epistle a, a letter. A letter is just like you would write. You don't have verse, you don't have chapters and verses in your letter, I don't think. You just write it, but when somebody gets that, they put the verses and chapters in there in order for us to find certain sections as we choose, yeah. you know, without too much trouble looking it up. But this is a complete letter from start to finish, and in this letter you'll find different subjects that he's talking about. And this is just one of the subject matters that he's referring to in this letter to Israel. And they are seemingly having the same problem that we are having. Yeah. And that problem is <laughs> the lust of the eye. I hesitated to say it, didn't I? The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. People have been having those three problems ever since day one. Yeah, yeah, the pride of the eye. Seeing things that does not belong to you, and you are lusting after those things, and going after those things to attain them for yourself without even asking God, is it your will that I should have those things? Just because somebody else has something does not mean that it is God's will for you to have the same thing. Isn't that right? Yeah, we are given in to the lust of the eye. That's why you have so many commercials on your television. Yeah, you can't watch a good story, a good program for the commercials. 
they know that you are led astray by the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh. You see things that look good and, and you want to purchase it or you want to steal it or you want to, how are you going to attain it? Yeah, because it looks good on somebody else. Because it looks good on a model, yeah, really ladies, it does it's not mean good. that it's going to look good on you. Isn't that right? I can recall, I can say this, uh, you know, kind of wake, wake us all up a little bit. When I was growing up and watching TV, I used to see pictures of Hawaii. Yeah, blue Hawaii. Yeah. And I used to see those hula hula girls with, with those grass skirts. And I said, if I can ever get to Hawaii, I will never come back to Shelby County. I was just, I was just a boy. I was just a boy there. I, I didn't understand. Yeah, yeah, are, are you seeing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it, it takes more than a grass skirt. Uh, uh, yeah, but anyway. Uh, Uh, no, I'm not gonna get in trouble today. I'm gonna just let it slide. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it slide. Boy. I, I could really do. I could preach a sermon on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it ain't just yeah. okay. Yeah, lusting after what we sometimes we don't even know what a person have, but we are lusting after what they have because we think that they have something that they don't have. When they come out, they give the appearance of everything going well and having all needs met and all bills paid. No sickness, no disease, no nothing. They come out smiling, they're all made up and everything is looking good. And you have a desire for what they have, but do you want to go through with what they went through with in order to attain even what you think they have attained? Uh, isn't that right? Yeah, a lot of preachers want to say, if I could just preach like Paul. But do you want to go through with what Paul went through with in order to get the anointing on his life you know, that, that he had on his life? Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, he was an anointed preacher. Isn't that right? Do you want to go through the suffering, the self-denial, the the prisons, the beatings, and, and shipwrecks, and all of these things. Do you want to go through all of that to attain the ability to write a letter to people that never wrote him back? Yeah, that's it. He wrote more letters than anybody in the New Testament, and you never read where anybody wrote him a letter back. That's bad, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you really want what he was? And he wasn't the greatest preacher. Yeah, he, he, was, he was a good writer. Yeah, you know. Isn't that right? That's why it's hard to preach one of Paul's yep. you know. messages, you understand? Because it's really a teaching, it's not a sermon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we still preach them, don't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I just want you to know, you understand, you don't necessarily want what you think you want. Your eyes will deceive you. Your flesh will deceive you into thinking that you want something that you really don't want. Yeah. And sometimes it don't take you long to find out once you attain it, you realize that this ain't really what I wanted. Isn't that right, ladies? Well, I asked the men, is that right, men? Yeah, 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 because, yeah, yeah, the packaging can make things look like what it really is. Yeah, isn't that right? See, but if we would go to God, you see, he kind, of, he kind of takes some of the uncertainty out of our life. Isn't that right? Because he will give us directions as to what is good for us and what not. And see, and what God does not want us to have, we shouldn't want it either. See, I want what God wants me to have. And if God don't want me to have it, then I don't want it. I really don't need it, isn't it right? Because I found out that God knows what's best for me. Do you believe he knows what's best for you? Isn't that right? But you have wars and rumors of wars because of people that are, what, lusting after something that they don't have. Countries are lusting after another country. 
They want the land. They want the oil rights in another land. They want the gold or the silver. They, they want the riches and the diamonds that is in the earth there in another way. And they're going to go to war to try to take what somebody else had. Yeah. Are you saying what I mean? Not only will you have wars among countries, but you have killings in the street. Yeah. Over turf. Guys out there fighting over turf. And they, they, they don't even own the sidewalk that they are standing on. You know, how are you going to fight? Oh, this is your turf. You don't even pay taxes. You don't own a house. You don't own nothing. The car you're riding in, you stole it. You understand? You understand? But this is my turf. You understand? Out there killing folks over something that does not what, belong, belong to you. And then somebody come up and want it. Isn't that right? Because they look like you got something going on. Isn't that right? Not 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 only that, but you got states fighting against other states. You got yeah, you got cities fighting against cities. You got church members fighting against church members. I said that kind of quietly. You know, saying we got not, not church members, but churches. Yeah. yeah, fighting against churches because of memberships, and you want to try to uh, draw their members over here. You know, we we want to have more members in the air. We want we want a bigger choir than they have. We want a, a preacher that's more notable than you. Uh, you know what I'm We want a politician instead of a preacher. Yeah, Isn't that right? Yeah, well, it ain't no move on from that. Yeah, you understand? We, we are, we're lusting after all. We have different lusts yeah. for different things. Uh -huh. Now, everybody's not lusting after the same thing. Most of the time when we think of lust, we think of lusting after somebody's body or whatever. Yeah. But people lust for many things in this world. They crave many things in this life that they shouldn't have. But you should be satisfied or content with what God has blessed you with. Yeah. And trust God to bless you with more. Yeah. For I find that if you are pleased with what you have, and are thankful to God for what he has blessed you with, that God will bless you with more. Yeah, Isn't that right? Yeah. You don't have to beg, beg God for things because God made you. Yeah. Not only that, but he created this earth and everything therein. Uh -huh. And if he made this physical world, don't you think he know what your physical needs are? Yeah. God knows what you have need of even better than you know yourself. Yeah. So what we need to do is go to God and ask God if it be thy will. Yeah, let me have this. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? If it be your will, bless me with this. But nevertheless, not my will, but that thy will be done. We got to learn to trust in God. Yeah. And whatever we do, not just in church matters, but in everyday life, we got to learn to lean and depend on God. For yeah. well, he knows what's, what's best for us. Yes, Lord. Isn't that right? Yeah. And be satisfied with what we have. Isn't that right? Yeah, learn to love what you have. Isn't that right? Learn to like what you have. Learn to thank God for what you have. Yeah. Because it could be you didn't have that. Right. Isn't that right? I heard the preacher talking earlier about some of the things they did not have. You understand? But God brought them through those days. Yeah. And he's bringing you through these days. So whether you have little or much, it is God yeah. that brings you. Yeah, some of us have been through some sick days. And then we had some well days. But whether sick or well, it was God that brought you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it's always a, a, a need for God in our lives. Isn't that right? For whatever situation or circumstance we find ourselves in, we need God. And we need to learn how to call on God even when we don't need him for anything specific. But I just call to tell you, thank you. For being so good. Thank you for being God in my life. Thank you for being my Lord. Thank you for being my Savior. Thank you for being my way out of nowhere. Thank you for being my all in all. For everything I've ever needed, all I had to do was just ask you. Oh, yeah, yeah. We all ought to be thankful and we need to have him in our conversation. God wants to be a part of our conversation. Yeah, if you love somebody, you ought to talk to him regularly. And God loves you and he want to talk to you. Most of us, when we call him up and talk to him, we talk so fast. When we get through, we hang up. We don't wait for him to talk back. Most of us have never heard God talk, you understand, because we hang up before we began to talk. But I want you to know that talking on the phone is a two-way conversation. Isn't that right? 
Yeah, when you talk to him, you need to let him have a little time to talk back with you. Yeah. Isn't that right? Life as we know it is too short to waste it on things that are temporary and unnecessary. I realize that all of the physical things that we see are temporary and that they will pass away or either we will pass away from them. But I realize that we are spending a lot of time on unnecessary things, things that we can actually do without just because somebody else has it. Yeah, but I want you to know that God is wiser than we are. And he does not waste his time, and he wishes that you would not waste your time on things that are unnecessary, things that are really, really, really temporary. We spend too much time, you understand, living and watch this spiritual adultery. Most of the time when we talk about adultery, we think we're talking about physical adultery between husband and wife and whatever. Yeah, but we spend a lot of time in spiritual adultery. That is being unfaithful to God. And our unfaithfulness to God is when we have fallen in love with the world and the world system of things and doing things the way the world is doing it and liking the things that the world like and, and, and have drifted away from God. Yeah. And the things that are of God, you understand, and that's called spiritual what? Yeah. Spiritual adultery. And I, and I want you to know whether it's spiritual or whether it's physical. I want you to know it's a dangerous lifestyle. Yeah. There, are, there is no real benefits to any type of adulterous relationship. Yeah. It, it only leads to tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Uh -huh. I'll move on. James lets us know in this fourth verse, if you back up some, that that form a relationship with the world. Uh -huh. it, 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 yeah, yeah, it, 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 with the world, I put system in there so you won't get yeah. misunderstood about when I say falling in love with the world. We talking about with the world system. Uh -huh. in, in that, we all are part of the world, but you don't have to be a part of the world system. Yeah. You don't have to be governed by everything that's going on in the world. You don't have to associate and do everything that the world is doing yeah. just to be accepted and uh, be, you know in the click yeah. isn't that right yeah god has a click he's called his church that's what you need to be associated with yeah. isn't that right i'm a child of god isn't that right and it need to be clear we not, should not be ashamed to let the world know that i'm on the lord's side yeah. i'm on the lord's side and, it, and there's certain signs that should follow us as those that are on the lord's side there there are some things that we don't do yeah when we are really on the Lord's side. There are, there are some places that we don't just go to because but we're on the Lord, uh -huh. on the Lord's side. You know, we should not be ashamed to own up to him in the world. Most of us will own up to God when we are at church uh -huh. because we are around our like kind. You know what I'm saying? Others in here are like us, amen. But what about in the workplace, uh, in your neighborhood? Do you let it be known that you're on the Lord's side? Or do you go along with the go along? Whatever everybody else is doing, you go right along. Isn't that right? Yeah, those, those crazy jokes in, in the break area, we laugh just as hard as anybody else. We don't even act like we are offended when they're telling jokes on the preaching, jokes on the deacon, and jokes on, jokes on the choir members. Isn't that right? We laugh harder than anybody else. Isn't that right? We need to let them, you talking about my family. Yeah, I'm offended by that. At least if you don't say, if you don't have the nerves to say that, you could get up and leave. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that right? Yeah, but you know anything? You be telling some of the same kinds of jokes. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are showing your allegiance to worldliness. Isn't that right? Yeah, you like to go to the same clubs. You like to go do the same things. You like to even, instead of you influencing their dress, you're letting their dress influence you. We are to be the salt of the earth. We are the saving agent in the earth. You understand? People ought to try to emulate us and to be like us in order to be what God would have them to be because they are trusting that we know what God expects of us and that we are doing the right thing. But when we turn over and start doing what they're doing, then the world is totally confused. Because they don't know right from wrong. Because you can't tell the church from the sinners when they get in the street. 
Because everybody is going to the same place, doing the same thing, acting the same way, cussing the same way, drinking the same thing, eating the same thing. Isn't that right? Out with everybody but your husband or your wife. Isn't that right? I ask you, are you married? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, when I'm at home, I am. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but when I'm here, yeah, yeah. When, yeah, when. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Why well, make one happy when I can make all of them happy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? You understand? But we got to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, we got to let it be known that we take a stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to just fall for anything. Isn't that thing? You know, God is not pleased with that. You understand? So if God is not pleased, I don't want to do anything that would make him unhappy. Is that right? Yeah, so I just stopped by just for a little while today to tell you, yeah, that we got to form a closer relationship, yeah, with our God. Yeah, we've got to submit ourselves to God. That's what it's saying in the seventh verse. We've got to submit ourselves unto God and resist the devil, and the devil will flee from us. So then if you're being tempted by Satan and the Satan's devices, then you've got to draw closer to God. You understand? And then Satan will flee from you. Because there's one thing that will put Satan to flight, and that is the word of God. Yes, yeah, Satan and his enemies and his and his demons, yeah, his little followers, his imps. You start talking scripture and they get ready to go. Yeah, you can tell when they come over to your house when you start conversating about the word of God. Is that all you know to talk about? Is Jesus? You know, and every time, hey, you understand? You say, "How you doing?" Praise the Lord. It don't, it don't take all of that. How did he get into the conversation? You just let them know. You, know. you ain't got to be a fanatic. But I'm just saying, you understand, you need to let people know what side that you are on. You understand? You need to let God know that you are not ashamed of him. Jesus wants to know that you are not ashamed of what he did for us. He said that if you are ashamed of him before men, he'll be ashamed to own you before his father and the holy angel. Are, are you hearing? I don't want him to be ashamed of me because I need him to be my spokesperson because he is my lawyer, my advocate in heaven's courtroom and I'm, I need him to speak up for me. Yes, I've already paid the price and I, and I want God to say case dismissed. Yeah, because I know him. And not only do I know him, but he knows me. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah, and when we draw close to the Lord, then we can humble ourselves in the sight of God. And then we begin to meditate on God's word. And we allow the word of God to wash us clean because the Bible tells us to wash in the word of God. Yeah. The word of God will cleanse your heart. Your heart is your mind. You want to cleanse your mind of all ungodliness, unclean thoughts, because you're going to be held accountable even for your thoughts. Isn't that right? We need to wash our mind, cleanse our thoughts, you understand, so we can think godly thoughts. Isn't that right? What would God think about this? If I do this, what would his action or reaction be? Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. We cannot control tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens tomorrow is not based on what we do. Some of us think that we can control our destiny or our future, but I want you to know it's all in the hands of God. Yes, so we must trust God for our future. We must learn to lean and depend on him. Isn't that right? Yeah, tomorrow may bring, sun, may, may bring sunshine or it may bring rain, but you're going to have to trust in God for you to be here to see it. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If you want to be here to enjoy whatever God brings on tomorrow, you need to put your trust in him. You need to put your confidence in him with all the drive-by shootings going on, all the storms, all the earthquakes and divers places and all of these things that are going on. You need to put your confidence in God. I don't care if you know Kung Fu, Karate, and all the rest. You did so and all the rest of it, you understand? You cannot protect yourself from all of the dangers and things that are going on in the world today. You're going to have to put your confidence in God who's able to build a fence of protection around you and your family and protect us all from all hurt, harm, put in danger. Isn't that right? Yeah, God will take care of you. Yeah, whatever betides you, yeah, God will. 
Because God is able, because God loves you. Somebody said it earlier, God loves you. Isn't that right? He loves the whole world. That's right. He sent his son to die for you because he loved you. It was not God's desire for any of us to die and go to hell because he loves us. We are the apple of his eye. He made us in the image of his own self. Isn't that right? Yeah, he gave us a free mind and a free moral. It made us free moral agents so that we can pick and choose our own praying ground. He loves us too much to make you go to heaven if you don't want to go. That's why if you choose not to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he will let you go to hell because he will not infringe on your rights. If you don't want him, then he won't force you to go to heaven. If he don't send you to heaven, you choose to go to heaven yourself, go to hell yourself. And if you're going to go to heaven, you're going to have to choose your God yourself. You're going to choose Christ yourself. You're going to have to say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. I give him my life and him I will serve. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let the Lord direct our footsteps. Our Bible, is it contains the word of God. And the word of God is our roadmap. The word of God gives us direction for our life. Truly, yeah, the, the world, the life that we live, it is unstable, it is uncertain, but with God on your side, it stabilizes. Yeah, yeah it, it adds direction to your life when God is leading you. Where he leads me, I will follow. Isn't that right? I'll go with him through. Where will you go? Nobody to help me. Through the valley, I will go with him. Nobody's going, I'll move on. Yeah, wherever he leads me, then I am sure to follow. I will not resist him, but wherever he takes me, I will give him my heart and my hand. Lead me, guide me, oh, thy great Jehovah. Yeah, through this pilgrim land, you understand. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me in thy powerful hand. Yeah, I can't hold you, but you hold me. I, I give you all of me. Take all of me. I, I hold nothing back, but here I am. Use me in your service. Direct my footstep along this narrow way. Be a light unto my pathway, for I heard you say that you were the light of the world. Father, in this dark world that we are living in, be a light to my pathway so that I don't stumble and fall back into a world of sin. Isn't that right for that? Without the Lord on our side, we are living a life of uncertainty. But with God on our side, our way is sure. Our foundation is solid. For he is the solid rock. On him I stand. No other ground that you're standing on is, is solid. Yeah, but all of the ground is sinking sand. Isn't that right? Without the Lord to guide us, we are unstable and we are insecure. We don't know what decisions to make. Isn't that right? We don't know what to invest our money in. We go and ask somebody else and they just lost them, but we are listening to their decision. But we'll go to God, he'll tell you. You can always bank on me. Put your trust up. In me, you don't have to worry about the government closing up when you put your trust in God. Isn't that right? Yes, yeah, sooner or later, all governments will fail. Sooner or later, you're going to have to turn to God. For on Him we can depend. Isn't that right? Without God on our side, life is really not worth living. Yeah, without God on our side, life is really unimportant. For there is no substance to our life. There is no future to our life without God. If in this life only we have hope, we are above all men most miserable. We got to have a hope and a trust in God that when this life is over, when this earthly house has been dissolved, when this earthly tabernacle has been drawn, has fallen down, then we have another home that's not made by man, but made by God eternally in the heaven that, that we all can go to and live throughout eternity. Isn't that right? Without God to guide and to lead us, 
We are lost and can't find our way. Most of us are acting like we know the way, but I want you to know we are lost. If you don't know God, you are lost. He knows that you're lost. So you all are like sheep that have gone astray. And Jesus came in order that he would find the lost sheep and bring them back to the sheepfold. For I heard him say that if you are my sheep, then you know my voice. Not only that, but I know my sheep. And a stranger's voice they will not follow. When you hear the Lord calling your name, saying, Come ye that are laboring heavy laden, come unto me and rest. For I am the Lord thy God, that healeth all of thy sicknesses and all of thy diseases. And whatever you need, all you got to do is call on me. Isn't that right? Whenever I pray, I say, Lord, let your will be done. Down here on earth as it is in heaven. Ain't God all right? This is my daily prayer. The door of the church is open to whosoever will come in and put their trust in the Lord. For he said, behold, I stand with my arms wide open to whosoever will. There is always room for one more. Will you come? Well, by a letter of Christian experience or a candidate for baptism, the door into the kingdom of God is open to you. Trust in the law until I die. Trust in the law. I will trust in the law until I. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the I stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I In the name of Christ Jesus, Holy Father, we are so thankful and we are grateful unto you and we bless your holy name for you are our holy God and we are your holy people. You designed us to be so and we're so glad that you touched our hearts to turn and accept your gift of salvation. We are so thankful that we are in the household of faith. We are so thankful that our future is sure because you hold our future and you open every door and we thank you right now. You the heart fixer, you the mind regulator, you are the healer, you are the restorer of our faith. You renew us every day. We thank you every day, Lord, that you wake us up. We thank you every day, Lord, that you have a place for us to lay our head. We thank you, Lord, for your favor and your bounty. We thank you, Lord, for both spiritual and physical blessings. We, we thank you, Lord, that you are our keeper. Not the government, not the mayor, not the governor, but you are our keeper. And we thank you right now. You sustain us and you maintain us. And now, Lord, let your grace and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with all of us. In the name of Jesus, we all said amen. 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 Yes.